so we get disconnected but we have that so I added some dill and it to the mix so I will mix it I'll make it like a sweet tasty that's how I love to do the eggs even if I'm trying to so you can see my pot is cooking it's bubbling and I had some Asian season here. I'll just add it to it. A big season made of uh, cornstarch, rice flour, sugar, salt, spice, garlic powder. Anyway, I'll just add it to it. Just in case we want to finish that. Let's open it and use the sun. I still have some left there. Yeah. And uh, I'll just finish it up. I'm going to add some oregano as well. It is not just not just me eating. Take it to church. I will put a tiny bit of spice, not too much. So I put a little bit of sriracha, just a tiny bit, so to balance it to those that me would want to spicy with those who do spicy. Just a tiny bit.
will decrease the temperature to 200 Fahrenheit. Um, even 185 Fahrenheit. Uh, let her do her Guest of honor.
J'ai amené trois igniums. Non, il est où le troisième igniums? Tu as mis ça dans le frigidaire. Oh, yes.
manger quoi aujourd'hui Fanny Lucien, le, le connaît, le médecin, le toutes choses là. Dans la vie, il faut que tu manges à des heures régulières. Thank you.
Personally, I like to fry with other oils. I don't like to fry with olive oil. But
can I have a, a taxi here for uh, 5.30?
encyclical of uh, Pope Francis, I believe, called Laudato Si, where he praises God's work in creation. I haven't read that. But when you look profoundly, you believe, you come to see that they were not so far off. And obviously, for those of you who are Miguel Lunin TV, you can see that I do interreligious, I have an interreligious uh, polytheistic. category. So I began to prayerfully see what is in communion with this, you know, incredible, incredible faith that I have. And like St. Paul says in the scriptures, It is truth that religion of Christianity that I honor the faith of my ancestors. Do you remember the scripture? I will look for the I will look for the references and I'll put it online when I upload the video. Or in the comment sections, you know. So I've always believed when people are doing something good, you tell them it is good. When you are able to see the to bring it in Christ. And I believe this is what we are called to do. In Christ, and this is how missionaries have succeeded to bring Christianity in many of countries, especially when they came from Europe to Africa. They had to learn the cultures of the people, and they had to see how it was in line with the Word of God. And this is how we come to have Christmas, because in some uh, cultures in Europe back in the days, December 5th initially was not Christmas. December 25th was, uh, I believe, a celebration by uh, animistic European cultures. And uh, they were able to say, uh, in Christ, this is what this means. So while those who still believe in those uh, cultures celebrate December 25th as when it is for them, today Catholics also celebrate December 25th as of the nativity of Christ. Otherwise, I believe back in the days, uh, the feast of the nativity of Christ was celebrated on uh, December 5th, December 6th, I believe, the feast of Saint Nicholas. And uh, I mean, it was truly an honor to realize that. Assumption of our lady. It's just so epic. So I am truly grateful. did not realize that in the midst of all that they were doing, the Holy Spirit was still moving.
so the carrot has this. I've read some now. You know? Carrot. Chopped already. It came from Old House Farm. I'm going to mix some of this inside. Sit for the salad, no? Corn, kelly, onions, carrot, and I think we almost done. This kind of wind berries.
So, in life we are not to be limited only by the knowledge we have received from uh, the knowledge and the faith that we have received from our father, mother, community. The saints are who they are because in their life they have built on what they have received. Some of them have discovered, have received knowledge from Christ in incredible manners. And I believe that the Lord has sent me to do a good faith in school. Many had thought that by going to Ambrose, that uh, I will convert to the evangelical faith, but the Lord and I knew that I was going there to really uh, grow in a different dimension, to really be communion ecclesial, communion of the churches, that what Christianity was first. And I believe this is what my journey has been, to be able to study, be with others, while still being. So it was a journey of humility, because there are times where I had discovered things that were part of the faith for them. These were moments of profound and sweet as well. I believe the salad is good. This is what's going to church. I was thinking to mix it now, but I think I will give the option to people at church to I'll put this on the side. As you can see, it has many colors. Pretty epic. Catholicism is a present in the kingdom of Saladu. And uh, people like me would want it to stay. So there are two options. Either you try to comprehend in the light of Christ in a proper manner what has been, or to align with those who want to revolt and who knows if you don't want the king to wake up one day and be like these people of Christ are not bringing peace to the kingdom goodbye <laughs> it has happened in other cultures matter of fact it is the case in Bhutan in the kingdom of Bhutan in Asia there is no Catholic Church, there is no Christianity yet. They had those who have become priests, and there are very few. I think the last time I had checked, there was only one priest in the Kingdom of Bhutan. He was not given permission to start any Catholic Church. All he can have are uh, Catholic centers, and uh, so Christianity has not been approved in the Kingdom of Bhutan. 
So you see, when you hear things like that, it's very crucial. So if you're going to go in a culture and you are not able to see what in that culture is in line with Christ, and it becomes a process of assimilation instead of Christ for somebody, wherever he went, and this is what he taught the apostles, he himself, he says, I have not come to abolish the law. I have come to fulfill the law. So he works with what is there, but then he just refines it, you know, so, anyway, that's my, that's my perspective, loving people. Um, and, uh, yams are frying. What else do I have to do for today's party? I have to do dishes, probably. To do dishes. So the juice is ready, the salad is ready, the yams are being fried. So while the yams are being fried, I will do the dishes. the dressing on top so that everybody has enough of that. And I'll mix it when I get to the church. What do we say? I'll see how I feel about that. That's a detail. The most important is that the cooking is done and that I'm ready myself. Um, that's the most important of this one.
do my best carefully. such a wonderful place, you know, but it is. They had 
change the ways of sharing. Uh, 
Parisian of uh, Mary some poly women those who receive apparition of them or visions of some stuff or su supernatural moments that have to do with Christianity are often referred to by mystics and they often have to be approved by uh, a local clergy and certain things like that so this said, um, there's a book called the, the, the Life of Mary According to the Mystics. It's an incredible book. So it's uh, different passages from the different apparitions and the different, uh, different moments of the life of Mary that were put together and probably uh, moments that repeat themselves were put together and published. So in that passage, it is narrated, Our Lady herself narrated to the Holy Women how her assumption has happened. So before her death, not long before her death, Christ, her son, appeared to her and gave her the option to ascend into heaven like him when the time comes. But she chose to uh, carry on her mortal life and died her normal death like anybody. And upon that, once she passed away, she was put into the tomb. Obviously, she did not ascend like her son Jesus, but she was carried to heaven by the angels. The apostles came to the tomb. The apostle Thomas wasn't there when she passed away. He came later on and he was like, no, I really want to see her body. So they went to the tomb and opened the tomb and the body of Our Lady, the mother of our Savior Christ, was no longer there. Her body had been carried to heaven by the angels. So they received uh, the angels, uh, appeared to them and told them, this is what has happened to uh, Holy Mary, the Holy Teotokos, the mother of God upon her passing and this is the reason why her body was no longer there and obviously the image of our lady being assumed into heaven and surrounded by the angel is a vision that she has given to some of the mystics for time and centuries in her and obviously some have painted it and again granted us the grace for us to be uh, able to see such, such things today so this is the story of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. That's why we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption year after year. And the habit of celebrating feast year after year is something that we inherit in the Jewish tradition because uh, in the Jewish tradition it is custom to commemorate and celebrate a uh, liturgical moment in order for them, I mean, today we have calendars, we have YouTube videos, we have things, we have YouTube, we have things like that, but in those days, for them to be able to pass in history from generation to generation, to know this is what has happened, um, those celebrations were commemorated again and again. So if you look at them in the New Testament, you will see, and even in the Old Testament, in the book of Esther, there's a passage where you see how the Jew was celebrating year after year the uh, victory into certain war or the deliverance from certain circumstances when the Lord delivered them from uh, from Egypt for them to remember what God had done they will celebrate year after year and generations after generations will be told obviously you know they had the stones but they will write history but 
And in the New Testament, we see as well that this is a tradition that was passed on because Christ, year after year from the moment he was born, him and his mother and St. Joseph, they will go on pilgrimage every single year for the Feast of the Passover. I don't know if you remember that. So for us to celebrate certain um, moments year after year, not just in Christianity, but as Catholics, Christians, it is to remind ourselves, remind ourselves where we come from, what we are about. And uh, there's so many things that we could celebrate, but it is up to each person. But there are certain key celebrations that we repeat ourselves. The rest, if you want to spend every day with a saint, you can go on your blog and you can see that every day of the year there is a man who has testified of God's wonder in heaven and on earth before his death and after his death of God's glory in his life for the saints who commemorate every year every day there is a saint every day so that's that's the reality that's the story 4.55 I believe I must be almost done
to function as an independent tactic of military forces. So, when the king of Sweden revises his text, apparently the Swedish Bible has over 400 songs. Uh, I am yet to come across the Swedish Bible, and I will let you know. So I do not know. I do not know that. Back in the day, I suppose way before our current, the current king of Sweden, King Gustav. So if I was ever to revise the Bible, <laughs> what would you say? To be given that opportunity, or I was ever consulted, it would be an interesting.